Have you ever looked at a game like Ghost of Tsushima and wondered, wow, how did they do this? Luckily, they were pretty open about talking about how they did it. Let's go through their GDC talk and we'll implement something similar based on their ideas. So to get started, they begin by chopping up the world into tiles. Tiles are used to drive various parameters of the world from artists and whoever else. Then they move on to describe their compute shader setup. From the sounds of it, this is used to generate the per instance grass blade data. So where they are, how they bend, basically everything about each blade of grass that'll be consumed by the vertex shader. So, I mean, the gist of it is they generate a bunch of data per grass blade. So the first order of business is, of course, making that tile of grass. We'll build an individual blade of grass using these vertex IDs or vert IDs, and I'll just use the vertex shader to create positions from that. Then we'll instance this a number of times, generating a unique position for each blade of grass. This gets us our very first completely uniform set of grass. In the talk, they place the individual blades of grass using a jittered grid of points. So you start with evenly spaced points, and then just apply a small random offset to each one. This ensures reasonably uniform coverage. They also talk about using Voronoi noise to give them some ways of clumping the grass for artistic purposes, giving them controls for clumping and clustering. We can pretty much just copy this jittered approach verbatim. So what I do here is just apply a small random offset to each blade of grass, as they mentioned in the talk. I'm going to skip out on the Voronoi for the time being. I get the feeling that it's not absolutely necessary, and we can just start simple. We can also add some angle variation by rotating each blade. I'm just doing that in the shader via a per blade hash value that I generate. Why am I not using WebGPU? Good question. I probably should, but I'm doing this in JavaScript, and doing it this way will probably make it more broadly compatible with anybody who wants to try the code out later. Let's move on to some details of the grass itself. In their talk, Sucker Punch mentions they use a cubic bezier curve to model the shape of the grass. They have a few parameters, including a tilt and bend, which is used to curve the grass blade. So the basic idea, at least what I'm getting out of it, is that you need a mechanism to shape the grass blade so that it curves. They use a bezier, as pictured here, since you can manipulate the control points to give you a lot of control over the shape of the curve and animation. I mean, we could just go with that. The code is right here since I had to make the animation. But I fiddled around a bit and ended up just using a simple rotation of the vertex on the x-axis based on the height and a random per blade curve value. Gives me a really similar effect, so I'm content, and it shows that there are multiple paths to achieve the effect. Although, who knows, this may come back to bite me later, but let's not dwell on what ifs. The next additions they make are by using a slightly rounded normal in place of the flat grass normal. So you can see here that they've got an artist supplied normal map for the blade of grass. I don't have an artist handy, so I chose to hack this into the shader with two rotated normals, and I blend between them. If I'm not supervised, I will just hack at things. The effect seems to be pretty similar, I get a rounding of each blade. In my lighting test bed, everything seems good. The lighting seems to work just fine. I guess I could have just taken their texture by screen capping the video, but oh well. And then they apply a subtle view space adjustment based on your viewing angle and the direction the blade is facing. They say that they slightly shift the verts in view space. There's no real details here. But I kind of screwed around with it. I kind of just shift the verts in view space before the final transform is written out based on this kind of view space thickening factor, which is based on the dot product of the view direction and the grass normal. I just fed that through this easing function and then ramp it down as we go completely orthogonal. Otherwise you get this weird crisscross with the other side. I didn't spend a lot of time experimenting here. You can definitely see that the grass is lusher and fuller like this. We can zoom in and see this individual blade as I pan the camera around, kind of trying its best to stay on screen and then it gives up at some point. It's an awesome trick, it works great, even with my incredibly lame phoned in version. Let's move on to lighting and colors. So they have some artist authored textures for their grass, which controls gloss and color. They enable specular, but blend it with the terrain normal to avoid aliasing, and probably the biggest thing is that they generate their own simple ambient occlusion. 
Now we've cranked up the amount of grass a bit, and I'll do the exact same thing. I'll have a simple gradient going from base to tip, and I'm going to pick my own colors here. So we'll go with a darkish green at the base, and a sort of yellowish at the tip. I can control this with a simple shaping function. With the specular, I'm just blending the normal with the up vector based on distance. I'll fiddle more with the parameters later, but we've got the code in place now. And finally, the ambient occlusion term. So this value is being generated in a really basic way. Starting with some overall density, we'll assume that we fill that in later, and we'll remap that into a shading range. Fully dense areas will get a lot more shading than sparser ones, and then we adjust based on the height. And so this is kind of starting to resemble grass. So they mentioned that they have some sort of global wind system driven by Perlin noise and that can be sampled on both the CPU and the GPU. There's apparently a second talk that goes into more details, but I don't feel like watching that. I'm going to run with the Perlin noise keyword. So first I want to get some basic movement going. So I take a sample of the noise based on the grass position, and I scroll that with time. And I just add that on top of the curve of the grass blade. This kind of adds some subtle movement. Then I take another couple samples of noise, one is interpreted as the direction of the wind and gets remapped into the range 0 to 360 degrees. The second sample is the strength of the wind, and then we just scroll both of those with time. Then I apply that as a rotation on the vertices in the same way we do the curve, but based on the wind direction. The end result is a lot stiffer instead of that flappy effect they showed, which looks awesome. Their whole game looks awesome. But similarly, I'm seeing what other ways we can do this and how those turn out. I based this on some footage of plants in the wind I captured a few weeks ago on my way to Toronto. In reality, you just do whatever looks good to you. I feel like this looks pretty nice, but keep in mind, I don't have an artistic vision here. If a lot of this has looked interesting to you, and you want to be able to do similar work, I happen to have a shader and math course that teaches you from the ground up. We work from total beginner to some pretty advanced topics, like we're doing right now. The link's in the description. Now, the final piece of the puzzle is the level of detail system. They have two levels, high, which has 15 vertices, and low, which has 7. Then they blend from high to low. I'm going to do something hand-wavy similar. I'll define high and low, and that'll determine how many vertices are in each blade of grass. I'm going to be super cheap and make the faraway grass just a single quad. So the high detail will lose its curvature as it transitions from high to low, and I'll just hot swap them for each other. Once that's in, you can see that I've placed like at least a jillion more blades of grass into the scene. We're somewhere in the millions at this point, but this is taking something like 1.5 milliseconds on the GPU. We could definitely ring out more performance. They're way more aggressive and swap out four high level of detail tiles for one low. It may be worth checking that out, but they were productionizing the system and I'm just screwing around here. At this point, it's probably up to you to hone in on some settings that work pretty well for you. Ghost of Tsushima uses thinner blades of grass and bends them a lot, so they get that nice specular reflection going which I sort of have a similar setting here after fiddling around with the parameters. Tweaking the lighting and colors a bit more, and I added a layer of basically crap on top. The little butterflies and puffs are just shader-driven nonsense, but I really like the windswept planes look that we have going. So what we have looks pretty decent as is. I've gone ahead and added some other stuff into the scene, some terrain, some different sky and fog settings, tweaked the lighting, water with a screen space reflection, and tens of thousands of trees. I know we didn't follow the talk 100%, but at the same time, I always view these as more inspiration and a rough guide, rather than a rigid set of steps to follow. The end result looks pretty nice, so I'm content. And as always, this is running in the browser, which is really neat. Cheers.